Good morning, sir. Can you hear How me? are you? Can you hear? Yes, sir, I can. I'm good, thank you. Okay, so let's continue with our lecture. Uh, the last thing that we did yesterday was the was this question of LIFO, FIFO, and FCO, and this was your home assignment. So have you solved this question? Yes, sir, I have. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the reconciliation. This is the same thing coming from MA1. In a period of rising prices, uh, if you want to see a comparison between all the methods in closing inventory, how it will affect the closing inventory prices and the cost of goods sold. So this question was basically, unit cost at first was $2, then 2.10, 2.12, and 2.40, and so on. So obviously it was a period of rising prices. So if we use, let's say, FIFO method, first in, first out. So obviously what will happen in first in, first out, we will be using these units. The units that we bought first, we will be using first in our production. So obviously the cost of goods sold will be higher. And at the same time, Sorry. Cost of goods sold will be lower. It's a first in, yeah, sorry. So cost of goods sold will be lower because we are using the cheapest unit first, $2 and $2.10 and so on. So cost of goods sold will be lower. And the closing inventory will be based on the last units that we bought and which will be um, at the higher prices like 2.40 and so on. So obviously the closing inventory will be higher. After that, last in, first out. In last in, first out, our cost of goods sold for production, we will be using these units first, the expensive unit first, or the units with the higher prices first. So obviously, the cost of goods sold will be higher. And the inventory then will be based on the cheapest units like $2 or $2.10 or Closing inventory will be based on those units that we bought earlier. So obviously the closing inventory will be lower. Lower than the FIFO. And about the AVCO, whatever method you are using, it will always give you an average. The closing inventory will, whatever is the value will be in between the FIFO and LIFO closing inventory, and same goes for the cost of goods sold. And exactly opposite thing will be happening for the period of falling prices. So completely vice versa. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Any questions so far? No, sir. All right. Next, inventory cost. When we are buying inventory, so there are two types of cost or the total cost of inventory, total cost of inventory or buying the inventory is basically, we can express in this equation, the total cost of buying inventory is always ordering cost plus holding cost. Ordering cost includes all the costs that are necessary to place an order. Clerical and administrative cost. Administrative costs basically include all the accounting costs, then the transportation, transportation cost, delivery cost, any cost to bring in your inventory from supplier to the warehouse and production run cost then you are buying the inventory and then you are testing that inventory. So all these costs are associating, associated with ordering the inventory. Once we order the inventory, then we also need to hold that inventory as well. And when we are going to hold in the warehouse or storeroom, then we have to pay numerous costs for that. So cost of storage, for example, interest charges. Interest charges basically mean the more inventory you will going to buy, the more capital you will lock up. If you are not buying or holding inventory, you could use that capital somewhere else and you can get some 
or you can earn some profit over it. So if you're going to buy and hold more or excessive inventory, so definitely you are locking up your capital and it costs you. After that, insurance cost for holding the inventory, maybe you need to get some insurance, obsolescence or damage or deterioration or wastage because the more inventory you will going to hold, the more will be the wastage. So total cost of inventory will include the total ordering cost and the total holding cost. Holding cost basically includes all the costs that are necessary to hold our inventory. Simple words we can also call it storage or storage related costs. And ordering cost, all the costs that are necessary to incur or which are directly incremental for buying your inventory or to placing an order of your inventory. All the directly incremental cost of placing your order. What is the meaning of directly incremental cost? Directly incremental cost mean that these costs will only arise if you place an order from your supplier. Otherwise, there will be no ordering cost. So total cost of inventory will be ordering cost plus the holding cost. Sometimes we also have stock out cost as well. Stock out cost basically means that let's say if you order less amount of inventory, then you will be holding less amount of inventory as well. So in case you decided to hold minimum amount of inventory or least amount of inventory, so there will be higher chances of stock out. Stock out basically mean that maybe you will run out of inventory when you need it or when you need some inventory for production. So inventory might not be available. So in that case, um, certain stock out costs may arise. For example, um, if you run out of your inventory during the production, so there will be a production loss. There will be idle time for the labor that labor is available, they are willing to work, but there's no work at all because they run out of the inventory. So production loss, idle time, um, sales loss as well, that may be customer requested for some goods and you might not be able to deliver goods on time. Maybe you might lose because of de late delivery, you might lose some major customer. So all these can be related mm. to talk out costs. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Any questions so far? No, sir. Okay. 